the hustle begins at dawn as the GPU springs to life. And as the day unfolds, you can come and explore the wonders of the GPO firsthand, where you will encounter a myriad of experiences to delight your senses. But beyond the tangible offerings lies an intangible journey. It's really fascinating. You know, Calcutta GPO is celebrating its 250 years. Uh, well, 250 years is a very long time in, in history and you know, these 250 years are practically the period that is synonymous with the modern history of our country. The need of the postal system started with the aftermath of Palasi. In 1765, after the grant of Diwani to East India Company, Clive considered it necessary to tone up the postal system of Bengal. By then, Bengal presidency had overtaken Madras in importance. Hence, speedier and reliable means of communication was essential. Even before that, there was some kind of dark system, some kind of dark arrangement during Nawabi time. Even during the time of Sher Shah Suri, there was a kind of postal system in India. In 1772, Warren Hastings intervened. He became the first Governor General of the company in 1773. Now, East India Company, Warren Hastings, as far as I remember, in March 1774, had set up the GPO at Calcutta as the prime post office in their area of control. Mr. Redfern was appointed as the first postmaster general. Initially, his office consisted of one deputy, one Indian assistant, seven sorters, and 15 delivery peons. First thing that comes to my mind is this wonderful structure that was built in 1868. The construction started in 1864, construction of this building, and it ended in 1868. Before that, for more than 100 years, Calcutta GPO was functioning in different places of the city. The history of GPO is not the history of today's building. It has much more to it. Initially, it was situated in the courthouse built by Richard Boshier. Kathleen Blesheden writes, this house stood for 60 years on the site where St. Andrew's Church now stands. When Clive initiated the postal reforms, he ordered all letters to be directed to the government house or to this Raj Bhavan for sorting and distribution. But the government house too was small for handling letters. Then where it was shifted belonged to Mrs. Eliza Fay, the author of the original letters from India and was located at the corner of Church Lane and Hastings Street. But Church Lane was widened by addition of a strip of land taken from old burial ground. From this house, the GPO was shifted to Chorungi, then to Oil Bazaar, then to Sadar Diwani Adalat at Sadar Street. The roaming office of Kolkata GPO found its shelter in between the current metropolitan building at the northern end and the museum at the southern end of Chaurangi. The GPO continued to function from this address till 1807 when once again it was shifted to Bankshell Street. From around early 40s of the 19th century, the postal authorities began to press for a permanent location of the GPO. It was only after the separation of the revolt of 1857 that the Raj decided to construct a permanent building for the GPO. And the building, because of its beautiful architecture and the way it is maintained even today, has turned out to be an iconic building of the city. It's a heritage building and it is easily identifiable. When you see the eastern veranda and the southern veranda, you will see 
there are Corinthian capitals, which uh, of course you will find in uh, Greco-Roman architecture in Europe. This is from where it was taken by uh, the architect of Calcutta, GPO, Sir Walter B. Granville. In the early years of GPO, uh, in 18th century, towards end, there was an interesting service which was introduced by the East India Company. It is about um, Palki Dak. Uh, people could travel from Calcutta to Benaras, Calcutta to Patna by Palki, and uh, postal runners, they used to carry the Palki and transport people from one place to other place. This was done because postal employees were perceived to uh, be aware of all the roads and all the locations. In 1851, the introduction of the telegraph represented a monumental leap forward in communication, marking the dawn of a new era. Furthermore, in 1879, the introduction of the postcard marked yet another significant advancement in postal services. One did feel proud to be part of a system which facilitated this uh, Joga Jog. Around 1882-83, um, a, a Babu working at GPO, a clerk, passed away. And his family was in distress because whatever was his savings, that was not substantial. The concept of insurance was not there in India at that time. Director General was uh, Mr. Hogg at that time. He was touched and he uh, wrote to the Her Majesty's Secretary of State to India that we need some insurance scheme for the postal employees. So the approval came in an express way and postal life insurance was introduced in India. 1st February 1884 was the day when postal life insurance was launched from this building. And at one point of time in 1920s, great physicist C.V. Raman was working as Assistant Accountant General PLI in this office at Calcutta GPO. And under his signature, PLI policies used to be issued uh, to the customers. The Postal Department played a pivotal role in the dissemination of news, acting as a cornerstone for the growth and development of numerous newspapers. When malarial fever ravaged the city and the countryside alike, it had to organize the distribution of quinine through the counters of post offices. The superstitious belief was one of the major barriers to sell quinine. So the postman used to dress like God Shiva to and sell quinine in remote areas. This place is full with history. The GPU building is built on the site of the old Fort William. Carson took steps to perpetuate the memory of the old fort by placing brass chips, some of the pavement marking the outlines of the old walls. There is a multi tile tower clock which was purchased from the manufacturers of the Big Ben in 1896 at a cost of rupees 7,000. British there is a ghori, Kolkata Shah to Jotogulo Ache, and most there to Unutomo Ghorioche, GPO Tower Clock. Erokum Harut Borsh and Onik British made Ghoriace, Tarmothe, iconic Holo Kolkata GPO Tower Clock. And for the first time when it was installed, uh, the sound of the chimes was so great. Uh, it was, uh, you know, almost like deafening, and the people of uh, the square people who were working in different establishments, they all came together and they complained to the postmaster that please disable the sound, otherwise we will not be able to work. Each corridor, each room, each part of the terrace is part of some incident or other. <laughs> Mm 
सिटी There is sorting hub. That sorting center also works here. Secondly, you see that mail motor vans running all over the city, round the clock, 24 hours a day for 365 days a year. These vans, they also originate. These schedules, they also originate from Calcutta GPO and terminate at Calcutta GPO. So operationally. its locational advantage is there which makes calcutta gpo a particularly important in the postal system people have uh, had and still have a lot of confidence in the gpo so as i said that gpo always keeps us on our toes and the service always has to be top notch in essence The Kolkata GPO's evolution exemplifies a harmonious blend of tradition and progress. It has not only adapted to the digital revolution but also redefined its role in the community, becoming a symbol of empowerment and inclusivity. Pankti ke sabse aakhir mein khada hua insaan hai. Uske aantu hum poch sake to hamare liye bahut acha hoga. Hum sab ko milke लोगों की सेवा करनी है यही हमारा निश्चय है दिस इज द रिजॉल्व दैट वी ऑल शुड हैव थ्रू इट्स प्रो एक्टिव इनिशिएटिव एंड फॉरवर्ड थिंकिंग अप्रोच द जीपीओ कंटिन्यूज टू अपहोल्ड इट्स लेगेसी while embracing the opportunities of the digital age embodying the spirit of a resurgent india